I'm leaving my van behind because we're back at it again we're in the, the parking lot of Schiphol Airport and we're on our way to Namibia so it's the third time we're going to Namibia and I'm pretty stoked about uh, this third time last time we got over 80 species of uh, reptiles and amphibians so I'm hoping we're going to get close to 80 maybe even to 90 this time around we'll see but it's cold as fuck I'm going to go inside of the airport and I'll meet you guys on the other side of the flight after three exhausting flights we're finally here back in Namibia and look at this view Oh man, this is amazing. Incredible. We're gonna have to wait for a few more people. They are going to arrive tomorrow and then the moment that they are all here, the trip can start. So I'm looking forward to it. Look at this. This is one of the first snakes we found on the trip. And this is one of the most common cobras down here in Namibia. This is the zebra snake or the zebra cobra, the barred spitting cobra. So these guys, this is a tiny individual, you know, so they can grow quite a bit larger than this. But uh, a full grown adult, it can literally spit you right in the face, right in your eyes, super accurately from uh, three to four meters away. It's insane. So these guys are really one of the kings of spitting here in, uh, in Southern Africa. Look at this, a gorgeous animal. He doesn't really want to hood too much because I'm not stressing it out too much, but uh, we're going to release it right here so he can uh, go on his merry way. So follow me. We made it to our uh, second lodge of the trip after a long day of driving. Um, oh man, I'm so tired. It was so hot today out in the car, but we had a really good drive. We uh, saw Varanus albigularis crossing over the road, uh, Agama knobeli, uh, you know, sitting on top of rocks, Agama atra as well. So it was a really cool drive, but it took so long. This is the third time I've done this drive, but I never get used to how long it actually takes. We're in uh, Cape Man's Hope right now, getting ready for dinner, because we're going to have an early dinner, then a night drive tonight. So I'm going to take you guys on this night drive. Hopefully we'll see something cool. And then tomorrow morning, it's an early morning, because we're going to try for Bitis Zeropaga as well. So the desert mountain adder, one of the hardest ones to find here in uh, Namibia. So that's going to be for tomorrow. And after that, it's a bit of a drive again to Aus. And that's going to be uh, one of the, um, the places that we're going to stay for the longest because there's a lot of cool species down around us. So I'm going to get ready for dinner and then it's off to a night drive. It didn't take us long the next morning to find our target, one of the rarest in Namibia, the Desert Mountain Adder. By the way, we shot an entire video on the Vipers of Namibia, so don't forget to check that one out as well. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
So after a uh, gorgeous morning, a very windy morning at the coast, looking for Bitis Kurnuta and succeeding, we're back land inwards to look for yet another dwarf species. But this time it's not a dwarf Bitis, it's a dwarf tortoise. We're looking for the Nama Pavlober, the well, actually one of the smallest tortoise species in the world. Now these guys, they are uh, critically endangered, I think. Uh, I think the last time they got studied, I think they classified them as vulnerable. But due to the massive heat and drought here in uh, Namibia, many people think that most of the population has already perished. So no, it's not looking this great, that great for this tortoise. We're out here in the habitat. Look at how it looks, it looks amazing. Look at that. Still very windy out. We've got some uh, tortoise biologists with us on the trip, so um, I'm hoping we're gonna get lucky and, uh, and get one. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. It's gonna be looking for a needle in a haystack. We'll keep you updated on what we get. Look at these beauties. These are Nama Padlopers. These are the tiniest tortoises you can get here in Namibia. Now, these tortoises here, they live in a very arid, very dry habitat and they're classified as vulnerable, so they're not doing that great, you know, even though we still found a few of them, it's getting very hard to find them here in the wild and the drought is really, really a big problem to them. There's not a lot of vegetation left for them to feed on. Now these are two males and it's quite funny because earlier Laura found a burrow and she found this male together with a female in this burrow. But apparently the female didn't want anything to do with this guy and she just left. And we got back and there was another male together with this male in the same burrow. Super fun that we got to see them again. And look at how majestic these are. Look at how cute. So tiny. Some of the tiniest tortoises on the globe. The Nama Badloper.
And so we were driving from Sasrim on our way to Swakopmund and along the side of the road we see one of our top target species for the trip a beautiful Namaka chameleon just sitting on a rock next to the side of the road look at him look at this this is the most amazing chameleon you'll ever see in your life this is the Nama desert chameleon now this animal is adapted specifically to live in an environment as barren as this there's not a single tree around now usually chameleons they live up trees but this chameleon lives on the ground he only climbs like small little bushes small little scrap but that's it now what's cool about this is this is the only chameleon that lives in these types of habitats the mediterranean chameleon can handle a desert but this this guy lives in the dunes this guy lives in areas with not a single plant around going without water for days what a beautiful beautiful chameleon You can't visit Namibia without a quick stop at the Tosha National Park for a proper African safari. Seriously, it's one of the best game drives in the world. So we arrived at our last destination of the normal Namibia expedition we are now in the Erongo mountains we're gonna check what we can find out here but it's been pretty hot all through the day and it's cooling down now a little bit maybe it's good for tonight maybe we'll find some stuff roaming around tonight because it's quite hot still but uh, during the day I'm not too sure we're gonna look and see what we can get for our last last spot of the expedition but look at this look at this habitat look at that there's a rock literally overhanging me right now there's cracks everywhere this is prime habitat for like uh, rock pythons boomslang uh, zebra spitters even mambas you know and the occasional angolan python angolan dwarf python so um yeah pretty pretty cool spot maybe get some drone shots in as well because these landscapes are incredible so yeah we'll see
saved on the road. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You're free to go. Run away. Big zebra spitter. Just came out on the road, he gave me a real shower. <laughs> wow. And that's it for our adventure in Namibia. We'd like to thank our herb conservation members that joined us on this trip, as well as our local partners who helped make this adventure a reality. If you liked this video, please leave a comment and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching!